Okay, today we're going to start standard 17, which is find and interpret slope. So there are four different things that we want to be able to do. We want to calculate slope from a graph. We want to calculate slope from two points. We want to calculate slope and determine if it's a zero or undefined type slope. And then the last thing we want to do is calculate a slope from a story problem. So let's just get into some vocabulary. I'll turn the first page of the pink packet. <clears throat> First thing is rate of change. So the rate of change is just how much something is changing. The amount that one variable is changing compared to the other. And then what we're going to do is we're going to talk about just x and y. So we know what x and y are. And so our slope, our variables are x and how x is going to change in comparison to y or y changing in comparison to x. So slope, when we calculate slope, we're ca calculating a constant rate of change. Now, the only time that that is not true, that it's not constant, is when we get into the word problems or the story problems. We're just going in between the two uh, values that are given in the problem. So our slope, our constant rate of change, is going to be the change in the y numbers over the change in the x numbers. Okay. Now, when you see this, it's normally written out as y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. Now we're going to get into that a little bit more on the back side of this page. So we're actually going to talk about the y because y on the graph, here's the y axis right here, since y is up and down, the top is going to be how much we change up and down, we call that the rise. And then the x axis, because the x axis goes this way, right to left, this is how much we change right to left, which is called the run. Now we are going to try to always go to the right when we run. So you can also call it right. So rise over right or rise over run. Okay, so there's two dots here. There's one dot here and one dot here. And what we're trying to figure out is how much did we change from this dot to this dot. So when we talk about, so this dot is on the left this dot is on the right. So we are going to rise. This is kind of like driving in a car, and these are the streets. So these little gray lines here are your different streets on each block. Okay, so you have to give me driving directions from this dot to this dot. So think about like on a map, you're driving. Okay, so you have to go down this street, or up this street, and then you're gonna go to the right. So I went up two blocks, and I went to the right three blocks. So that is our slope. It changed up two over, we're going to write everything as a fraction, over three. So slope is always a fraction. Okay, let's try that again. So we've got two dots here. This dot is on the left side. This dot is on the right side. <clears throat> okay, so we always start on the left so that we can rise and then go to the right. This time when we rise, we're actually going down the street. So how do I communicate to someone that I went down two blocks? I'm going to put a negative there. Okay, and then I'm going to go to the right. One, two, three, four to the right. So because I went down, I'm going to go down two, and then to the right, four. Then we always want to make sure we reduce if we can, either use your calculator or just divide each one of these by two. So dividing both top and bottom by two. So the answer is negative one over two. That's our final answer. Okay. So we just have to get some practice at this. So we've got a couple more dots here. Where we're going to go up and over. So we're going to start here on the left dot. This dot is on the right side. Okay. So we're going to go, in order to get to here, I'm going to go up the street 
and then I'm going to turn right. So I went up one, two, three, four blocks up and two blocks over. So four blocks up, two blocks over, which reduces to be two over one. Now it does say or, because there is another option here. It's just not the best option. So let's say, why do we always have to start on the left? You don't have to. It just makes it so that we're all doing the same thing all the time and you deal with a lot less negatives. So let me show you. Okay, so here, if I started on this dot, I would have to go down four. So that would be down four. And then I would have to go left two. And we haven't talked about this, but left is also negative. Well, negative four divided by negative two is still two over one, but sometimes we get messed up with negatives. And so sometimes we think that it's still negative because two negatives, we think, well, does that make a negative or does that make a positive? Well, it actually makes a positive, okay? So then let's talk about that same idea of we, it's just easier if you start on the left, so that's what we're going to do. So here, this dot is on the left, this dot over here is on the right. So if I count down and then right, it's down one to the right, one, two, three, four, five. So I would go down one, right, five. And no reducing needed there. If you counted the other way, the other way would be up one and to the left five, which would be the same answer. It's just if we always go right, we always know that the bottom number is going to be positive, and it just makes it easier for us later on. Okay? All right, let's turn the page and let's talk about using uh, the slope formula. Okay? If you're using this video to help you get caught up, there is a maze on the back of the packet that is for practice. So you want to uh, stop the video right now and do this practice before you move on to skill two. This is skill one, so go ahead and start here on the maze. Count the slope here, starting on the left. Count up and then count over. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five. That is slope three over five and then go on to the next one. That's how that maze works. Okay, skill two. This is actually using that formula that we put on the sheet the first time. So skill two, again, we're talking about change in y over change in x. And we'll write that formula again. The more times we write this formula, the better. It's y sub two minus y sub one, x sub two minus x sub one. Okay, so we're going to use that formula with the four questions below here. This is x, this is y, this is x, this is y. So why are there little ones and little twos underneath these letters? Well, the one and the two just stands for this is the first x you see in the problem. This is the second x you see in the problem. First y, second y. And it's just to say that this y is not the same as this y. There's really no other purpose for those numbers. Okay, so here we go. Y2 is negative 1, so let's get our fraction set up. I'll, I'll go negative 1 minus negative 1. Negative 1 minus negative 1 on the top. And then on the bottom, we're going to do the number 4. So our x values come next, the number 4 minus a negative 2. Now minus a negative, of course, is going to become a plus. So this actually ends up adding these two numbers together. So negative 1 plus 1 is 0 on the top. End up adding these two together, which is 6 on the bottom. Now if I took in a calculator and did 0 divided by 6 to reduce this, that answer would just be zero. Okay, let's try that again. 
the very first thing you need to do when you get to a problem is to label your coordinates with your x, y's. And this is the first set of x and y. This is the second set of x and y. Okay, so we start here with our y sub 2 and we subtract our y sub 1. So I'll start there. 6 minus 2. And then we go with 2 minus a negative 4. Don't forget to write both of those minus signs. Okay, and then we figure it out. So 6 minus 2 is 4. This is going to end up becoming a plus. So 2 plus 4 is 6. And this can be reduced, so I'm going to reduce before I'm done. They both have a 2, so I'll divide by 2, divide by 2. And my slope is 2 over 3. This would be a good time to push pause on the video and try C and D yourself and then hit play to make sure you got the correct answer. I'm going to keep going, but please feel free to hit pause so that you can try these next two on your own. First step is to go ahead and label your points, starting on the back side here. 4 minus a negative 3. Make sure both of those signs get down on your paper. Over, and then come back to the back side here, the second one. 1 minus 7. Okay, let's figure this out. Minus a negative becomes plus. So 4 plus 3 is 7, 1 minus 7 is negative 6. There's no reducing that can happen there, so we're good. Now, if you happen to look over at a friend's paper and the friend has negative 7 over positive 6, that's actually the same thing. It doesn't matter if you write it like this or if you write it like this. Those are the same answers. You can actually even write the negative out in the front and then do 7 over 6. Any one of those three answers is acceptable. Okay. Final problem here. And then there's some practice on the back side again. Oops, that's a Y, sorry. <clears throat> so we'll start with the number 3. I like this. There's no negatives here. 3 minus 5. over, and then we'll go to the x's, 6 minus 0, three minus five is negative two, six minus zero is six, and then that actually can be reduced. We'll reduce that to negative one, divide that by two, so that's one, Divide this by 2, that's 3. Negative 1 third. Okay. If you turn the page to page 6, there is some practice problems for slope skill 2 that you should do to make sure you feel comfortable finding slope. And then uh, when you come to school next again, you can go ahead and show me this skill 2 so I can make sure that you are on the right track.